Good evening. Welcome to the 49th Annual Commencement Exercises for the Class of 2019 here at Blackstone Millville Regional High School. I'm the class president, Cam Sarandolo, and I want to thank everyone for coming to celebrate with us tonight. Now, if we would all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. At this time, the high school band under the direction of Mr. Todd Schaefer will perform the national anthem. It is now my pleasure to introduce Principal Michael Dudek for a few remarks. Good evening. What a wonderful day to celebrate purple and gold. The sun is shining, so let us enjoy this day as a day to celebrate all that is good. As mentioned by Cam Sarandolo, I am Michael Dudek and I've had the privilege to serve this class, this school, and the Blackstone Millville community as principal. I'd like to welcome members of the school committee, Superintendent Dr. Jason Del Falco, Assistant Superintendent Mr. Aaronworth, Assistant Principal Mr. Ducharme, Honored Guest Dr. Dina Cardi, Class Co-Advisors Mrs. Ducharme and Mrs. Desolitz, faculty, families, friends, in the graduating high school class of 2019 to the 49th annual commencement exercises. I would also like to personally welcome and acknowledge each of our teachers and educators in our district who have joined us today. You have been instrumental in helping our graduates get to where they are today and I'm excited to share in this celebration with you all. Tonight would not have been made possible if it were not for some important people. I'd like to offer special thanks to Mr. Ducharme for organizing awards night and our graduation ceremony. Thank you to our custodial crew who worked tireless, tirelessly to set up graduation arena and the reception area. Mrs. Salome, Mrs. Rondo, and our graphic arts department were a tremendous help in preparing the graduation program, the diplomas, and virtually everything else. We also need to thank our high school music group and Mr. Schaefer for the music conducted yesterday as well as tonight. <laughs> Seniors, soon to be graduates, I thank you for this honor to speak at this very special occasion as you make the transition from being high school seniors to BMR alumni. Let's go back in time to the beginning of this year when you first became seniors. 
You may have realized then that things would soon be changing and you had big decisions to make about your plans after high school. The next chapter you now take is one that can be full of anxiety, but I know many of you are excited about what is to come. Enjoy the next chapter in your life and know that you are prepared. Look at where you are now. You all have finished strong. Positive emotions come over me as I think of the highlights of your high school years and all the possibilities that lie before you. Today, your salutatorian, valedictorian, and class president will share some of their highlights with you, but I'd like to take a moment and share ones that I hold deeply. This year, I personally observed that look of accomplishment and inspired hope when one of you sat down to set specific goals and action steps, establishing a pathway of reaching her dream of becoming a chef. Building self-worth, seeing opportunity for a brighter future, and following through on a dream is amazing to, an ex to experience and see in person. Earlier this year, I had a conversation with a senior speaking about how we can improve our student teaching internship program, providing me with a formal plan of allowing students to co-teach a lesson. The passion and drive I felt from that individual was purely awesome. Finally, this year's Community Day was filled with service learning opportunities with students truly engaged in various activities on our campus. The seniors took charge of this day, proving how much they truly care about their community. As I look over this crowd and reflect upon today, I can see that graduation is bittersweet as we adults say goodbye to you and you eagerly say hello to college, to work, to new experiences, and new friends. Some of you I know cannot wait to get away from home and high school, while some of you feel more comfortable staying close to your friends, family, school, and homes. But it is truly time for you to venture out and explore the world around you. This year from the class of 2019, we have students who will continue their education in either a two or four year college or technical program, traveling as close as North Smithfield, Rhode Island, while some will travel as far as San Marcos, Texas. We have students who are studying to be teachers, engineers, lawyers, social workers, as well as some taking on apprenticeships as carpenters, chefs, and electricians. We also have students who will enter the military and bravely serve our country. I would ask any current veteran or new member of the armed forces to please stand and be recognized at this time. We have some students out there. We are all proud of you. I've truly enjoyed working with all of you these past four years. You have delighted me with your many achievements in and out of the classroom. You have shared your disappointments as well as the good times of your lives with me. You have amazed me with your demanding schedules that you have kept. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your journey here in high school. As I began to think about what I was going to write and speak to you about today, I thought about the many influences in your life. Television, music, social media come to mind with this generation. We constantly hear the advice of others, and I want to share some of my more interesting ones that I've recently heard. Amy Poehler at Harvard University addressed the class with this. You can't do it alone. Be open to collaboration. Find a group of people who challenge and inspire you. Spend a lot of time with them, and it will change your life. Ellen DeGeneres at Tulane University said, for me, the most important thing in your life is to live your life with integrity and not to give into peer pressure, to try to be something that you're not, to live your life as an honest and compassionate person, to contribute in some way. Ed Helms addressed the University of Virginia graduating class with these words. As you go out into the world, you'll find that people are qu always quick to define you, to pigeonhole you, to whittle you down to their preconceived notions. Which brings me to my point, never let others define you define yourselves. The senior class also loves their music. During lunch, we, were all, we would hear all music genres, including classic rock, pop, hip hop, hard rock, and so on. Anyone ever listen to their lyrics of their favorite songs? 
Well, let me share with you the advice that I hear from select artists. And I already promised somebody today that I would not sing the lyrics, so please do not ask me to do that right now. First one's really good. When dealing with heartache and negativity, Taylor Swift says, just shake it off. What values should you hold dear? Bon Iver sings, I told you to be patient. I told you to be fine. I told you to be balanced. I told you to be kind. And to those that remember the classics, the Beatles wrote, nothing you can make that can't be made. No one you can save that can't be saved. Nothing you can do, but you can learn how to be you in time. It's easy. All you need is what? Love. I know some of you are asking yourselves, where am I going with this? Well, other than me trying to find something that you will remember from my speech, I want each and every one of you to realize that the advice we hear and truly make sense of will guide us in becoming the person we want to be. Listen carefully with purpose to what others are saying. Listen to those influences in your life and decipher what makes sense to you. Will the words of celebrities, the lyrics from songs, or the advice from loved ones help you figure out and discover who you are? Over the past four years, it was our goal to teach you how to think critically, to analyze and synthesize the knowledge and advice given to you, and to use these skills to help find meaning in your life. Let this be your guiding principle. As high school graduates, you're well on your way to success. You will now be in charge of your lives as adults, and I know the lessons and guidance we instilled uh, in you will hold you in good stead. Do not forget what your parents and guardians have taught you, especially your mother. Do not let go of the values and fundamentals that the faculty and staff of BMR have helped you develop. When things get tough, rely on the lessons learned from those around you. Those qualities you acquired will guide you through those tough times, and, that will give you this, and this will give you the strength you need to make your dreams truly come true. I see before me young, confident adults. During these past four years, you have done all that we asked of you. You are on a journey to success and happiness, no matter what pathway you choose. I know you will do great things, and I'm very proud of you. So to the Chargers, of the BMR graduating class of 2019. I thank you for all that you do and have done for our school and wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dudek. I would now like to introduce our class valedictorian, Michaela Martinelli. Good afternoon, Superintendent Dr. DeFalco, Assistant Superintendent Aaron Worth, distinguished guest Dr. Dina Cardi, school committee, faculty, staff, family, students, friends, and most importantly, the class of 2019. After surviving the nearly 1,400 days of high school, we finally made it. That's something we should all feel proud of. Of course, we didn't conquer each of these days alone, so I'd like to take the time to recognize a few people who have helped me along the way. Mom and Dad, thank you for your endless amounts of love and support. If it weren't for your constant encouragement, I'm not sure how I would have overcome the numerous challenges life has thrown at me so far. To my sister Gab, it's hard to imagine how you've managed to put up with me all these years, but thank you for always listening to me complain and for always helping me when I've needed it the most. To my loving friends who never failed to make me laugh and smile, Thank you for always being there for me and for pushing me to become a better person. All the inside jokes, and no, I'm not for a teen, and crazy memories we've made together will forever be something I hold near and dear to my heart. And of course, I can't forget about the teachers who made a significant impact on my high school career and have demonstrated just how exciting school could actually be. But enough about me. I stand before you all with the expectation that I shall deliver some sort of life-changing and inspirational advice, something that will leave you all thinking that those four years were truly worth it and that the best is yet to come. Although I've been honored with the opportunity to speak before you all, I think it must be said that I am no more special or important than the rest of you. 
Just because I did well in school doesn't mean that I somehow know more about the secrets of life. Rather, each and every one of us has our own individual story to tell. We've all persevered through our hectic lives to be able to make it this far, and because of that, we've all learned life lessons and have succeeded in our own meetings along the way. Perhaps some of you have this misconstrued idea that because you didn't do exceptionally well in school that you weren't successful, but that's simply untrue. Life is defined by so much more than the numbers that have been used to track our academic performance. I think it's important to contemplate what you really want from life. If what you dream to become is a doctor, then so be it. If it's to start your own business, then so be it. If it's to travel the world, then so be it. But I believe what it all boils down to is happiness. Each and every one of us has that one thing that we're insanely passionate about and could talk about for hours. And it's this dedication and excitement that drives all of our most meaningful actions. When we were kids, still ignorant to the world around us, we were asked at some point what it was we wanted to be when we grew up. Perhaps that dream has changed now, but if you think about it, why was it that we said we dreamed of becoming a dancer or a singer or an astronaut? It's because we thought those things would make us happy. Though our career goals and aspirations may have changed a bit, our elementary desire for happiness still remains. Perhaps we found alternative sources for our happiness, but why should we suddenly construct a barrier between work and happiness when work is something we'll have to do for the rest of our lives? Indeed, life won't be easy. You'll have plenty of ups and downs, kind of like the ferry ride on Monday. <laughs> but I don't think you need me to tell you that. Every one of us will go through hard times at some point, but instead of shutting down at any obstacle we face, what if we took a moment to step back and look at the bigger picture? Surely all of these obstacles will be difficult to get through, and there may be even times when you want to give up. But promise me, and more importantly yourself, that you'll never forget your purpose in life. We all have something we aspire to be. From childhood till now, we've witnessed countless people work just for the sake of working, but surely there has to be something more meaningful than that. Regret is one of the worst feelings anyone could live with, so it's important to consciously make decisions for our future. It's pointless to dwell on the past, but what each and every one of us has the power to do is to shape our future. Over the course of these past four years, we have all grown and developed together in these tiny towns of Blackstone and Millville, but we must now embark on our own separate journeys. We shall look back on the fond memories we have created here in our small town and use this as a reminder of our origins. For our collective past is a single thing that connects us all back together. And though we certainly have a long road ahead of us, if we all work hard, we can achieve our wildest dreams. We can be happy, and if anyone can do it, I believe it's you, class of 2019. Thank you. Thank you, Mick. Now I would like to introduce our class salutatorian, Rebecca Sainamon. Thank you. Welcome Superintendent Dr. Jason DeFalco, Assistant Superintendent Matt Ehrenworth, Principal Michael Dudek, Vice Principal Keith Ducharm, School Committee members, distinguished guests Dr. Dina Cardi, faculty, family, friends, and the class of 2019. I would like to thank you all for joining us on this momentous occasion to celebrate our accomplishments. Tonight we gather together to reflect on the past 12 years of our, of our schooling while also looking to the future ahead of us. We will all go on to forge our own paths and shape our own lives. The next years are going to be very formative as we make the most important decisions we have ever had to make. But before we talk about the future, it's important to reflect upon our past. Together, we've achieved great things. As a class and throughout our school district, we've achieved two national titles with the marching band. Our student council has been awarded the Gold Council of Excellence. Our football team has won their first ever playoff game against an undefeated team. And three of our classmates have beat track and field school records, with one of them beating the shot put record five times. Though we have all said how ready we are to leave this school and how we can't wait for the future, it's important to recognize the impact that BMR has had on our life. This building is where we learned who we are and formed our own identities. Our teachers and faculty have aided us in this and in some cases pushed us in the right direction. I'm eternally grateful for all of the hard work they do. 
At this point, many of us have an idea of what we want to do after high school, from a career to college to the military. We are all going our separate ways and making a life for ourselves. I know for most of us, myself included, this was a very hard decision. In elementary school, I wanted to be a teacher, just like my Aunt Esther. In middle school, as I became more involved in the band program, I dreamed of being a musician. As time progressed, I realized my dream was to help the sick and to aid people daily, which is why I ultimately decided to pursue nursing. Making the decision of what to do after high school, whether it be higher education, the military, or the workforce, was definitely difficult, but the hard work isn't over yet. We still face challenges as we find our passions. When you ask a parent, grandparents, aunts or uncles, or any adult you look up to advice on what you should do with the rest of your life, many will say the slightly cliche phrase, find something that you love, will love waking up to every morning. When I was younger, I really didn't get what this meant, but now I think I have a little bit of a better grasp. As we move forward, we need to find our passion, something that we will be able to put everything we have into every single day. Even if this means switching majors or switching colleges or quitting a job to start fresh, it is important to find what we love. Some of us will become lawyers while they will fight for justice. Some will go into the military while they will fight for our country. Some will become engineers and create future technology. Others, like myself, will go into the medical field where we will take care of people from all ages of all walks of life. All of our paths will be vastly different, but I know each and every one of us will do ama amazing things. We will chase our dreams and accomplish outstanding things. This year, as I was reading a passage from my English class, I mentioned a quote that Robert Kennedy once said that I found especially inspiring. Kennedy said, if there's nobody in your way, it's because you're not going anywhere. At first, this quote came off slightly condescending. I mean, who has the right to say that if you're not faced with opposition, you aren't doing great things? But as you dig deeper, this quote to be, proves to be very powerful. In everyday life, you will have competition between peers, classmates, and siblings. I know I've had my fair share of that I'm better than you fights with my brothers. But this healthy competition makes you reach higher and work harder. Over the past six years, I've been in the high school marching band and the uh, audition-only district concert band, which gave me a first-hand look at real-life competition. The basis for both of these groups was competition. I auditioned and earned my position in the concert band, and every season in marching band, we would go to various competitions throughout New England to display our hard work and pride for the music and drill we perform. Our hard work paid off as we won numerous local shows and even two national championships. The competition that I experienced through band, or as many of you experienced through sports or club activities, taught us the value in working hard for our achievements. And this will be something that we will carry with us forever. As we grow older, we will face even more resistance. There will undoubtedly be people that say your efforts aren't good enough or that your efforts will mean nothing in the grand scheme of things. But it is your power to use these things to fuel the fire within you that will allow you to achieve anything you dream of. If you're reaching high enough and chasing your passions with your whole being, then people will try to stop you. It is your courage to overcome these things and uphold your passions that will be your defining accomplishments. This is the very reason by why what Robert Kennedy is so power said is so powerful. Your will to overcome obstacles and uphold your beliefs is the most beneficial characteristic each and every one of you possesses. I encourage all of you to pursue your passions to no end. To end, I would like to thank everyone who has had an impact on my life and helped me reach this point. I'm so thankful to be on this stage and especially thankful to those who have helped me accomplish my dreams. To my th teachers, I'm so thankful for all that you've taught me and how you've shaped me into who I am today. From the difficult classes that taught me to work a little harder, to the fun classes that gave me a break from the never-ending stresses of high school, all have helped me become the person I am today. To my friends, thank you for supporting me and I can't wait to see what the future holds for all of us. Thank you to my family who came today to support me and cheer me on in this important event in my life. Thank you to my brothers, Jake and Zach, for always supporting me, taking me random places when we get bored, and always pushing me to do amazing things just like both of you. I truly admire all of your accomplishments. To my mom and dad, you both have truly taught me what hard work is. Uh, you work your hardest every single day. I don't even have the words to express how much I love and appreciate both of you. You are my inspiration, role models, and supports in absolutely everything I do. I love you both. Lastly, I would like to thank the class of 2019 for sharing these memories and sharing the journey of high school with me. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. I would now like to introduce tonight's keynote speaker. 
a member of the class of 1987, a three-sport athlete, and Harvard University scholar. Our speaker was inducted into the BMR Alumni Wall of Fame on May 4th of 2012. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Dina Cardi. I'd like to thank Mr. Ducharme, Mr. Dudek, and most importantly, the class of 2019 for inviting me to your graduation ceremony. I'm very honored to be back. For those of you who might be wondering who I am, my name is Dina Cardi, otherwise known as the notorious Dina Pouliot, immortalized forever in that frightening picture on the Joe Struzik Memorial Award plaque. Yes, that's me. Many times I've thought about the laughs that picture has received over the years and the embarrassment to Noah Davies, my nephew. Where are you, Noah? Ah, okay. I've often considered how much money I'd have to pay Mr. Ducharme to allow me some secret access to that plaque so I could swap out those pictures. Then again, if it brings a moment of laughter to someone's day, it might be for the best. Like Mr. Ducharme, I graduated from BMR in that glorious year of 1987, big hair and all. After high school, I attended college at Harvard and went on to become a physician. I've been blessed by supportive teachers, family and friends who've helped me along the way. My deep love for the outdoors has led me out to Western Maine not far from North Conway, where I can enjoy the mountains, the peace of the lakes, and all the snow you could ever want. As I started to think about the whole process of preparing a commencement address, I tried to reflect on my own high school graduation. I could remember all the preparation. Uh, girls, boys lining up in the cafeteria by their height, completely stressed out teachers and administrators, wondering what some of the class rebels might be capable of. And I could remember my family, all dressed up and proud on that big day. I could remember shaking the hand of the principal as he handed my diploma to me. But I really could just not remember my commencement address. And unfortunately, I couldn't even remember who gave it. So as I pondered what I'd say to the class of 2019, I felt a little less pressure knowing that in 20 plus years, you probably won't remember much of it either. It also left me thinking that I wanted to try to give you something. I decided I wanted to give you three simple life pearls that I've learned along the way since my high school graduation. If you can remember one of them in 20 years, then this will all be worth it. So number one, Change the world. The most overused graduation cliche anyone has ever heard, right? As I graduated and saw that written on cards and letters from family and friends, I know it made me feel like I needed to enter the Peace Corps or become Chief Neurosurgeon at Mass General. Big things were expected of me. Well, I want to tell you that it's actually much simpler than that. I first realized this one day when I was in the grocery store. You know, you're in the checkout aisle, you just want to get through as quick as you can, your cashier might barely look you in the eye, and then they start scanning, scanning everything at nano speed. Well, this particular day, my cashier started a conversation with me, and I found that it was refreshing. You know, it took about maybe extra five minutes but it was really refreshing to have someone look me in the eye and take an interest in my day. So I'll ask you, when was the last time you started a conversation with someone you didn't know? Or even the last time you greeted a complete stranger? Maybe some of you have never done either. But think of what you might be missing. An opportunity to meet a new friend or just the joy of making someone smile. Changing the world 
doesn't require some grand scheme to bring electricity to a remote part of the world. And it doesn't require you discovering the next cure for cancer. Go out there, class of 2019, and make your corner of the world better with the simple things. You can change the world by being generous with your time, with your love, and most of all, with your words. So number two, uh, in my words of wisdom, you need to assemble a good team. I imagine that many of you have been on some type of team at some point in your life. Maybe it was drama club, marching band, or a sports team, maybe baseball. You were part of a group that had a common goal. During your high school or elementary years, I really hope you had the chance to be on a good team, a really good team. These are the teams where everyone has everyone else's back, win or lose. Trust me when I say that life can be really wonderful, but life can also be very hard, and it can deliver some really unexpected blows. You need to assemble a team that is going to support you when the curveball comes and you strike out. You're going to need a team to pick you up when that fastball strikes you in the ribs and drops you in a heap on the ground gasping for air. Equally important is that day when you hit the home run and there they are cheering for you. They're going wild. Celebrating your success and achievements is much more fun with a team than going it alone. Number three, be true to yourself. And this might be one of the hardest things for any human being to do. For some people, it can take many years to accomplish. And unfortunately, for some people, they never do. The main problem with this little piece of wisdom is that being true to yourself sometimes means feeling like you don't quite fit in. It can leave you feeling isolated and very alone. This is especially true at your ages, when everyone is trying to figure out who they really are, but yet that need to fit in keeps most of your true, beautiful self hidden under cover. Think of how many times you guys and gals have been out shopping and there was a shirt or a pair of shoes that you really liked, but you just couldn't bring yourself to buy them because you were afraid someone might make fun of you. Or maybe it's the music that you secretly like and you're afraid to share it because it might not be popular. Think about the times when you didn't say the things that you were really feeling because someone might think you were weak or they might disagree with your opinion. At some point in our lives, I think we're all guilty of covering up who we really are. And if you do it for too long with too many things, it can lead to unhappiness. And I really don't want that for any of you. I hope every single one of you can be true to who you really are. There are so many people out there with similar values and interests, but you can't find them if everyone is hiding. So, please do your best to remember these three little life pearls, or at least humor me by reflecting on them for maybe a few minutes before you go to bed tonight. Noah, and where's Ian, Ian Davies? Okay, you two can be certain that if I still walk this earth in 20 years, I'm gonna ask you if you remember. So number one, change the world, keep it all simple. Number two, assemble a good team because you're gonna need it on this crazy roller coaster called life. And number three, be true to yourself and you will find true happiness. So to this class of 2019, I hear you're a great group of unique and talented young people, and I'd love to have you get out there and enjoy this big, beautiful life. I wish you all the very best. Thank you. Oh, thank you very, very much. Thank, thank you. you, congratulations thank you. to you.
Okay, seniors, it is now time for me to introduce Superintendent Dr. Jason DeFalco, Principal Michael Dudek, and Assistant Principal Keith Ducharme for the presentation of diplomas. As Cameron said, the moment we've all been waiting for. Michaela Martinelli, valedictorian, National Honor Society Secretary, High Honors, Tri-M Class Officer. <laughs> Rebecca Sarah St. Amant, salutatorian, National Honor Society, High Honors, Tri-M Vice President. Cameron J. Serendolo, National Honor Society Treasurer, High Honors, Tri-M, Class President. <laughs> Caitlin Emmeline McCarthy, National Honor Society, High Honors, Class Vice President. Haley Rose Gervais, National Honor Society President, High Honors, Tri-M, Class Secretary. Claire A. Collins, National Honor Society, High Honors, Class Historian. Megan Marie Broder, National Honor Society Vice President, High Honors, Public Relations. Bradley Matthew Gignac. Hey folks, how about some motivation for Bradley? Come on, Brad. <laughs> Let's hear it.
John P. Allen, High Honors, Tri-M Secretary. Patricia Goodwin Anderson. <laughs> Kyla A. Armstrong. Corey S. Arzigian. <laughs> Lillian Lena Austin Honors. <laughs> Nate M. Avery. Kaylee Marie Azevedo, Tri-M Treasurer. <laughs> Ashley Elizabeth Back, Honors. Casey Page Bassett, high honors. <laughs> Madison Jesse Bisbee. Eric P. Ricky Blaze. <laughs> Cole Lee Bulldog Honors. Matthew C. Boucher. <laughs> Nicole D. Boxold. Brian A. Brabrant Jr., honors. <laughs> James Brantley. <laughs> Dylan Brown. Emily Grace Bullen, National Law Society, honors. <laughs> Samantha Butts, National Law Society, high honors. Kylie J. Kier. <laughs> Matt.
Madeline Jansen Carey, National Honor Society, high honors. Isaac James Casey. <laughs> Jenna Marie Castelluccio, National Honor Society, Honors Tri-Am Student Council. Christopher M. Chico. <laughs> Olivia M. Claflin. <laughs> Dylan J. Clement. Scott B. Constantino, Jr. <laughs> Allison Melissa Cottonwa. Caleb John Cottonwa. <laughs> Alicia Kanoya Honors. Alexis Marie Cox. Evan P. Crest Honors. Noah K. Davies Honors. <laughs> Dariana A. DeCastro Honors. Nicholas Michael Donahue Honors. <laughs> Colby B. Dubois. Tara and Duran Honors. Cameron J. Alfaterio. Emily Liliana Elston. <laughs> 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 
Cheryl Lee Estes. Madison Fernandez Honors. <laughs> Kelly Colleen Fitzgerald, National Honor Society, High Honors Student Council. Sean M. Fitzgerald. <laughs> Chloe E. Forsyth. Madeline D. Fortenbaugh. <laughs> Emily Marie Franceschi, National Honor Society, Honors. Zachary Frappier. <laughs> Rebecca Irene Gagnon, National Honor Society, High Honors Tri-M. Carissa E. Gottlap. <laughs> Jenna Lee Gauthier, National Honor Society Historian, High Honors. Austin Glode. <laughs> Nicholas Troy Goudreau, honors. Jacob Kyle Heldenberg, National Honor Society, High Honors. <laughs> Lily Isabel Hetzel. Kayla Marie Isaac, honors. <laughs> and presenting to her daughter, school community member Tara Larkin, too. Hannah Grace Larkin, honors.
Joshua Lorenzo. Kyle R. Lubinsky. <laughs> Brett A. Manor Honors. Andrew Jarrett Marcotte. Jarrett Christopher McCarthy, National Honor Society, high honors. Erin Marie McDonald, honors. Thank you. Charles M. McGregor. Dominic Steen Maley. <laughs> Emilia Rose Menard. Ian Thomas Millette. <laughs> Daniel Jeffrey Mills. Harrison J. Ouellette. <laughs> Hannah Riley Pelequin, honors. Lucas Pereira. <laughs> Alyssa Celeste Perez, honors. Francine Ponksavon, high honors. <laughs> Gavin Troy Pickard, honors. Trevor Pickering. <laughs> Benjamin Michael Pimenta, high honors.
Caitlin Provencia. Taylor Catherine Pryor. <laughs> Abigail Elizabeth Putnam, high honors. Lauren Nicole Renone Honors. Jesse Lynn Ranslow Honors. Chloe Lauren Reeve. My name. Briley Ann Rochette Honors. Dominic Martin Rodriguez. <laughs> Joseph Rodriguez. in memory of classmate Terrence J. Shorten. <laughs> Caitlin Sisko. <laughs> Jaylee J. Spearman, honors. Antonia Elizabeth Spellman, honors. <laughs> Eric St. Ives. Alex Staples, high honors. <laughs> Jacob Donovan Stratman. Matthew Chester Shimponic. Give me that head, give me that head. Let's go! Grace occasion.
Alexander Lee Tharp. Seth Matthew Tremblay, honors. <laughs> Shane C. Badnays. Cameron Robert Warning, National Honor Society, honors Tri M President. <laughs> Megan Grace Williams Baroff. Brandon Wood, honors. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2019. It is now my privilege to introduce the president of the class of 2019, Mr. Cameron Serendo. Before I begin, I know I'm sorry, but I would like to personally welcome the superintendent of schools, Dr. DeFalco, assistant superintendent, Mr. Erinworth, principal, Mr. Dudek, assistant principal, Mr. Ducharm, School committee members, distinguished guests, Dr. Dina Cardi, faculty, family, and friends, and of course, the newly graduated class of 2019. <laughs> Throughout high school, we learn all sorts of new things. We learn that the Civil War lasted from 1861 to 1865. We learn how to write a research paper. We also learned that to find the slope at any point in a function, we need to take the derivative. But what else have we learned? Whether we've noticed it or not, we've learned how to think. David Foster Wallace describes learning how to think as being conscious and aware enough to choose what you pay attention to and to choose how you construct meaning from your experience. This is something that I personally didn't really think of before we were actually out of high school that was before I realized the impact that my experiences in the past four years will have on the rest of my life. One thing that I made a priority to do before celebrating our last day was to walk the halls one last time. I'm not sure what it was supposed to mean, something sentimental, I honestly, I don't really know. Um, <laughs> but regardless, I did find time on the last day to make a final lap of the hallways and wings that have been our home for the past four years. I took time to look at the little things, the Chargers writing above the doors in the cafeteria, the athletes and the students of the month, the Charger Pride posters with signatures from students, and yes, even the monthly attendance posters on the windows in the cafe, proving again that juniors can actually beat seniors in school competitions. But we won't talk about that. In doing this, I found meaning in all the little things from my past experiences. I found the immense pride that exists within our students, myself included. We are the home of a variety of national and state champions, whether it be music groups, athletics, or our award-winning student council. We are home to honor students, volunteers, theater, and music performers. We belong to a very special school with values that make us think and ultimately discover who we are and what we want to achieve in life. This is something that I will be grateful for throughout my life. 
Whether we'd like to admit it or not, we have found ourselves here at BMR. It was in these halls and classrooms that we have found our passions, our voices, our lifelong friends, and our dreams for the future. A seed was planted in each and every one of us as we aimlessly wandered through the halls on our first day of high school. Four years later, here we are, grown into independent, unique adults, and now it's our time to chase those dreams and express ourselves endlessly. We have to use our new knowledge of thinking to find the little things in life that make us happy and ultimately successful. Along with learning how to think, we've also learned that you need to push yourself to work hard, make decisions, and surround yourself with people that do the same. In order to do this, you must have the confidence in yourself to make the best that you can be. In today's society, I think it's important to tell people to be who you want to be, live the life that you want to live, find the little things that make you happy. Living in a constantly evolving society, many of us lose sight of the things that make us happy. But once you accomplish this, you'll have the confidence to push yourself to achieve your goals. We're all starting a new chapter of our life. Now is the time to use our voices and become the individual that we want to be and that we've been raised to be. With this, we need to utilize these precious years to come to push ourselves to be the best that we can be and strive for success. Finally, I wanna thank mom, dad, Mike, Brian, Sam, and Derek. You guys are the reason I work so hard and you're the reason I push myself to be the best that I can be and I would not be here without the support of you guys, so thank you. I would also like to recognize some educators that have dealt a great deal of support and encouragement uh, to me throughout my high school career. Mr. Schaefer, Mr. Marcotte, Mr. Rowe, Ms. Shaughnessy, Ms. Conti, Ms. Gomes, and a big shout out to the lunch ladies. <laughs> to the officers, Ms. Ducharme and Ms. Desolates, it's been so rewarding and so much fun working with you guys for the past four years. I feel so honored to be a part of the family that we have become. To my friends, thank you for the countless memories and laughs. Whether it be dancing to and singing songs that absolutely nobody knows at prom, or watching Kate puke off of the back of the uh, ferry this past <laughs> Monday, we have been through so much, and these are times that I will never forget. I honestly couldn't imagine life without you guys, and I love you all so much. To the class of 2019, I want to thank you all for such a successful four years. I think our class is somewhat unique, and while we were on our senior trip, I realized this much more. Yes, we all have our cliques, but we're all friends, we're all kind to one another, and we all support one another, and that's something that I don't think many schools have. We've all accomplished so much together, and now our, final, our hard work has finally paid off. We all walk the stage tonight, and we're all about to flip a page to a new and scary but exciting journey. I'll be the first to admit, it's going to be very, very hard to walk away from some of the best years of my life and from the faces that have become my family over the years. Our time here at BMR is now over, but the memories will certainly never fade. I hope we continue to have the time of our lives in the years to come. I wish everyone the best of luck. Thank you. So to the class of 2019, congratulations, we made it. I invite you all to move your tassel from the right to the left.